Hello and let's talk about the explosion at the NLC India Limited plant near Kadalur in Tamil Nadu. The boiler explosion took place on Wednesday morning in Unit 5 of the plant and led to the death of 6 workers and injured at least 17. This is the second such accident in two months. Earlier in May, 5 persons were killed in a similar boiler explosion in Unit 6 of the plant. Now, one official has been suspended and the families have blamed the management for negligence. Both unions and opposition parties have cited the privatization of maintenance work for the disaster. The CPM, in fact, in June, had demanded an inquiry by the CBI and the Central Vigilance Commission following allegations of corruption in the organization. We talked to NewsClick's Prabir Purkaista on some of these issues. Thank you, Prabir, for joining us. So, uh, we've seen the blast explosion that took place on the 1st of July. There was another explosion quite recently, two months ago almost. And this has raised a lot of concerns about one general industrial safety as well during the time of the pandemic. We can come to that later. But in this specific case, how do you see some of the key issues that are involved, especially since the boiler units are quite old? Well, as you said, these boiler units are quite old. They're about 35, 30, 35 years old, if not older. And obviously, they need periodic checkups, maintenance, you know, uh, so that they are still not prone to failures. So that's an obvious issue. But, you know, there are two things, I think, which are very important here. One is, of course, it's happening in the times of pandemic. We do not know to what extent the normal practices are being, at the moment, sacrificed in order to reduce the number of people coming in. And if we postpone some of these things, which are critical, and for the safety of the plant, of course, a lot of the maintenance work is critical, then, of course, it can impinge on safety. That's one part of it. And we have had a number of industrial accidents take, play, take place. Of course, Tutikori is the is other example. That plants were shut down and restarted with not adequate care, and we had explosions and other consequences there. So one of it is during COVID times, do we really know how to maintain equipment safely? And that's an unknown because it really is something that each plant has to take care of itself. It's something that there can be no general guidelines. Mm -hmm. But obviously, well, one thing you cannot sacrifice is safety. And currently, we are in a very good situation on the electricity front because obviously the demand is much lower. And because the demand is much lower, your reservoirs are full. You really don't have a shortage of electricity on the grid. And you can very easily shut down plants and take longer time to come up if that is a problem. So that's the COVID general situation that I will talk about. I'm talking about. The other is that why do boiler explosions take place? You know, boiler explosions are unusual. They normally should not take place if your maintenance require, requirements are being met, A, and B, your control systems are working because your first line of safety is that the controls have to kick in. And any condition which shows that there is impending boiler explosion likely to occur because there are certain conditions which are taking place within the boiler, then of course you have to trim the fuel. And that's, that's how you take out any chance of an explosion. In this particular case, when you were trying to restart the boiler, that's when the explosion seems to have occurred, particularly the last one that we are talking about. And that's very much a part of probably, and I'm going to fly blind over here, but given the experience that we have had looking at plants, plant failures earlier. As you know, I was a control system engineer for a long time, basically involved in design of boilers, uh, of control systems. And of course, the boiler was a key element of that. So I would say that uh, the probable reason is that certain safety systems would also have been bypassed during starting of the boiler and thinking that it won't matter. And it normally it may not matter, but one time it does, you have an explosion. And that's, the, that's what we saw also on the NTPC boiler explosion, which took place some time back. And there was a plan to inaugurate it quickly. And they were trying to hurry up the things and the bypass the boiler protection, it exploded. So it, to me, it seems that in this particular case, the uh, hurry to restart the boiler for some reason, which I'm not clear because there should have been no pressure for this. Uh, that seems to have led to certain short, shortcut steps to be, that were being taken. And that has led to the explosion. And there's very unhappy loss of life and very large number of injuries that have taken place. And uh, boiler explosions really uh, kill people 
because the fire coming out, hot gases coming out, obviously have enormous potential to damage uh, people's, uh, basically kill them as well, those who are close. So looking at it and that it happened at 32 meters, that's what the statement is, it happened at one of the elevations. And obviously there was uh, some failure of the flame protection system, uh, not properly tripping the fuel, whatever it is, and we have the consequent explosion. I would say that this level of uh, competence, that you've had two such incidents within such a short period of time, re really calls for very stringent action to see that you do a complete safety audit of all the units over here, the practices that have been followed, and then uh, take, you know, uh, then only open them. At the moment, you don't have to. You can take the units out and do a complete safety audit and then only put them back. Two units out of six, seven that are there in this stage. I think that this station, uh, thermal power station two in Naivali has seven 210 megawatt units. You can take all of them out, put them through a safety audit before you restart. I think it needs much more serious action by the NLC authorities that we have seen till now. And this is a central government undertaking. It's not under the state, though it is located within the state. It's really not under the state. And NLC is one of the uh, really what they call the Navaratna kind of companies. So it is one of the key uh, jewels and crown jewels in the public sector undertakings, particularly in the power sector. It has a very illustrious past record. So given that, I think that time has come to take with the second accident that we have seen, time has come to take some stringent action and at least the minimum that should be done is a complete safety audit of the plant from outsiders and the practice that has been there in the plant because uh, from what we read in the papers, the unions and others have also raised the issue of maintenance being not being done regularly, shortcuts being taken, uh, basic safety measures not being taken. All of these are, have been talked about by the workers. So I think given that, I think that this need for a stringent safety audit, uh, I think the past chairman of, it, uh, of uh, CEA, Central Electricity Authority, uh, Bakshi, uh, Mr. Bakshi was supposed to head a committee which was supposed to look into the earlier explosion. I think we, the time has come for us to take, uh, the, at least think about a much larger inquiry, not just about the explosion, but running of the plant itself. Two successive boiler explosions are very, very unusual and look, seem to indicate a deeper malaise in the plant. Sorry. So the other question, Prabir, is regarding the age of the plants itself. Is this something like we've talked about? It's about 35 years old. Is it something? Are these plants right now still in a condition that can be maintained and work and continue for a while, or is there a need to maybe look at a much larger solution? You know, we have had plants in NTPC, for instance, the earliest plants, which have been in operation now for almost 40 years, the Singroli plant, for example. So I do not think age of the plant is particularly the issue because you can always take them down, refurbish them and start them again. So there are various ways to estimate the life of the plant and then take corrective action. Right. So I don't think that's really the issue. You can essentially run plants for a long time provided you take the necessary measures. And if you find there is a problem in a certain area, then you refurbish that. So that's a well-known uh, way of dealing with aging plants. So this is to be not the reason. And if you take these plants, they, there are a number of plants in the state electricity boards, as well as in NTPC, which are of the same vintage. Right. 210 megawatt units of VHL are the mainstay of Indian power sector, okay? particularly the earlier vintage plants. And later on, the 500 megawatt unit. Of course, VHL is now under attack of different kinds because of privatization. Huge number of uh, Chinese units came in as well as units from other places. But essentially, BHL was the main supplier for a very long time in the, in, to the Indian power sector. And these vintage of plants are there all over the country. So I wouldn't think 30, 35 years is the reason for this particular blast. I would say 
it is something that is much more the responsibility of the plant and its personnel. And in the larger sense, it's the responsibility of the NLC leadership. Right. And finally, maybe you already talked about, of course, the situation of industrial accidents, industrial maintenance during COVID itself. And you also, of course, seen the recent incident in uh, Vizag where there was the leak that led to people, again, a lot of people dying. So is, is there also a need specifically for a more centralized set of guidelines to uh, across across industries specifically on in this context you know how to run hazardous equipment hazardous units is quite known to the people who install and run such units mm -hmm. so the uh, the vizag uh, issue that you are talking about and the earlier we had the toti toti kodi issue as well all these are issues where people who run as hazardous units mm -hmm. should be able to do the proper checks before the equipment is start restarting. Mm -hmm. So it really shows lack of full awareness of what has to be done mm -hmm. and a lack of technically equipped human power, manpower mm -hmm. to be there at the spot who right. knows these things. Yeah. So maybe you want to start it in a hurry Maybe you don't want to call the people who really know these things and you want to avoid them because of travel for other reasons. Some of these plants were set up by uh, people from abroad. The Korea, mm -hmm. South Korea was one of the uh, plant owners. Mm -hmm. So it is possible that you make mistakes because you haven't called the right people. That's possible. Right. But I do not think it's a central responsibility or a regulatory responsibility mm -hmm. and go and do safety audits for each and every plant. Yes, we do it for boiler. There is a boiler inspectorate which goes and at the moment they seem to know, know less about the boilers than the plant people themselves. So it has become more a formality for the boiler inspectorate to come in and do an inspection. Do we need a strong regulatory agency for boilers? Yes, I think the boiler inspectorate does need to be strengthened. Can you do it for every hazardous plant? To my understanding, we, have, we can only do it in the limited sense because whatever safety audits we carry out, we really do not know the innards of a lot of these hazardous plants. Boilers are still much more, uh, shall we say, well-known. They're well-known beasts. We know what they are. We know their designs. And much more is available in the public domain on that. But that's not true for the chemical industry because a lot of them are really proprietary procedures. So we don't even know what is what actually the risks are, as you found out in the Bhopal gas uh, disaster. That what only all, all the... Uh, things that were there in that plant. I doubt very much at that time that India had the ability to know the, pros the possible dangers from this equipment mm -hmm. and this, uh, the chemicals used. And I think that would still be the case in a large number of chemical industrial plants. Right. But at the level of boilers, yes, regulation certainly needs to be strengthened. But in this particular case, I think the first uh, blame, the first responsibility is of the plant authorities. It's only secondarily that you can talk about the boiler inspectorate and others who should have also been alert about the possibilities and particularly after one explosion. Thank you so much for talking to us. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with major news developments from the country. Until then, keep watching NewsClick.